right, let's talk about the worker's swordfish. I'm going to be doing a review on this blaster, but you'll notice that there are no internals in here. I can't really hide anything from you with this beautiful, beautiful clear strife here. And yes, it is a strife. And there will be an exact answer for that at the end of the video for those of you that care. But the cop-out answer is because I don't really need internals in this thing to go over the blaster in depth. I mean, it's a strife. For better or worse, this thing is going to perform the same and functionally act the same as any strife. Now, I'm going to go over this over kind of like a good, bad, and ugly, and I'm going to start with the good here, but there's a lot to talk about, so for those of you that kind of tune out or whatnot, yeah, I can understand. I am going to explain everything. I'm going to kind of install pieces on this, so if you want to see this thing get built up with just the cosmetic pieces, you're more than welcome to watch, but... The Worker Swordfish here is their Hobby Kits grade level uh, blaster, essentially, that is a copy of a Strife, and that's a good thing, because it's a copy of a Strife. The Strife is a well-beloved blaster, not only because it's functionally really easy to mod, and it's a very versatile blaster as is, because of course it's a semi-auto flywheeler, and this thing is identical to that, it also, you know works with all the pieces that are out with it at least a lot of them not all of them but most of them and i happen to think that the swordfish looks freaking sweet if even if you don't like the kind of swordfish motif they have on the side of this and that is on both sides if you happen to fancy that the grip and stuff is so much more comfortable than the original strife i don't even know what to say this grip is fantastic it's virtually perfect now, a lot of you will notice that this thing is still asymmetrical, which is a thing that people kind of had a problem with when it came to the Swordfish, you know, when it first got announced. People were like, oh, I wonder if they fixed anything. And then they saw this and they were immediately turned off. That's deliberate because they want to keep all of the compatibility with all the existing worker accessories to the point that where you, when you buy the blaster, you actually get a piece you would need right here, an optional piece. You don't have to use this in the blaster but if you want to install the vector kit, you will need this piece. So that's why they throw it in with the actual blaster itself instead of the vector kit. So now you are compatible with at least all of Worker's existing accessories. And yes, there is an end strike stock attachment point on the back of this. Yes, there is a muzzle piece right here. There is an end strike rail down here and an end strike rail up at the top. All of that will be accessible. It doesn't have any clicky things in it or anything it doesn't really need that but all of that is built into the blaster and that's really nice and the best thing about this is if you followed kind of what's going on with the prophecy which is their previous their first made blaster that happened to be a clone of the retaliator you will know that they build up on this concept quite a bit there are a lot of parts and kits out for the prophecy and i happen to like that because not only do they happen to mesh well together but they also add new features and functions that are generally kind of a buildup of pre-existing ideas and designs. But it's still really, really cool to see that kind of stuff. I love my Prophecy a lot. I think it's a fantastic blaster, although it's a bit expensive to get all the crazy stuff that you can shove inside of it. But it's still really nice, and this is kind of the same thing. If you wanted a clear strife, maybe you wanted to put LEDs and stuff in this, then this is your baby, because we didn't really have access to that. Yes, I know the Evader from the Modulus line is coming out, and that is essentially a clear strife as well, but it's not a strife, and it's literally a strife. While this is not literally a strife, it is at the same time a strife, because it's almost the same thing. There are some subtle body changes to it, but it is almost the same thing. And you can already tell that Worker has plans to put some kind of stuff in this, because there's just an empty floating switch right here. Now, if you buy Worker's, like, full auto kit upgrade, it actually has a switch that you will put in right here that this piece of plastic will actuate. I don't have that, so this is almost completely useless to me. And then you can see some other weird little things, like, what is this little window right here? I can only guess that they're going to put some kind of screen or voltmeter or something right there it's only on one side of the blaster but you can tell they're thinking about the future with this thing and they're gonna have a lot of cool stuff coming out for it and worker stuff historically for what you get isn't really that expensive i don't think anybody is complaining about the price i think this thing's only like 25 30 bucks just like and now if you buy it from like a u.s reseller that can, price can go way up but 
if you're getting just the blaster itself from, you know, like Lytake or NF Strike or Worker Kit or whatever, then this is a pretty good deal if you're looking for this specific thing. And yes, this was sent to me by NFStrike.com, so while they didn't pay me or anything, they did give me the blast for free for me to give me my thoughts on it. And now we're going to kind of move into the bad stuff, because there is stuff that people don't like. There is some good, and I'm going to bounce back between the bad and the good now, but there is a lot of bad. The first thing that a lot of people don't like is that there's no jam door. There is no jam door whatsoever, and that's a positive and a negative. The negative is that obviously if you have a jam you can't kind of it's kind of hard to fish it out of there it's not impossible but you have to remove your magazine and do a whole bunch of stuff which is kind of finicky and that limits your compatibility somewhat i mean there are accessories that utilize the jam door that you can't use with this however it gives not only worker but me as a modder a whole cavity up here for me to stuff things into like with the ultima strife i didn't have a lot of room left over to do kind of what I wanted. I, in fact, I had no room left over. This gives me a little more flexibility. And speaking of Ultima Strife, well, there's something we need to tackle right here and now. Here is the Ultima Strife, because I just happen to have it handy, because this is one of my favorite things ever. And you'll notice that it's, uh, well, it's about that. And a lot of people, with how thick the swordfish was, they figured that this thing was thick because it could take... Essentially, it was already expanded. It could already take 180 sized motors and everything like that and bigger batteries, and that is not the case. It's a little difficult to see on camera, and I can't get too scientific with it, but these are the same thickness. The only difference is that it doesn't have the cutouts and stuff in it that make it appear thinner than it actually is. Instead, it's completely solid to give you the maximum amount of room for you to install parts and pieces inside of it. That is all. This thing will not accept 180 motors without any kind of motor cover or anything on there. It's not going to do that. It does have kind of guides built into it to where you can see where the motor would go if you wanted to cut those out or drill those out or something. But it will not accept them. This thing will take up to 132 motors stock. And, of course, Worker makes 132 motors. So that's kind of why they did that. But there is no 180 compatibility right out of the box. But... For it to say, like, oh, it's super thick and lopsided, well, that's not fair, because the Strife is as well, and this is just copying the Strife, but without all these useless cutouts that don't do anything. Like, I have these covered up, the, obviously, the side teeth thing and this hook right here. I hate those. I absolutely detest them. This has none of that. That's also a con, because this thing does not stock. There is no sling points on this blaster at all. There's no, like, accessory part where you'd have to buy something or put a stock on it to use a sling. Which kind of sucks. You would think that would be something that they would have uh, included, but they are going for the complete function over form right now. And they're limiting that and giving you the option of adding it later. So, yes, it, maybe it doesn't look better than you would think. It doesn't fix the problems that are with the Strife. But again, that is for maximum compatibility between all the worker accessories. So, for example, when I grab this worker vector kit right here, just the bottom piece, I can actually make this work with this blaster. Originally it won't, because remember this part down here is made to work with the strife. It's meant to clip over, well, the sling point right here. This doesn't do that, and that kind of doesn't make it look very vector-ish, in my opinion. It makes it look vector-like, but it doesn't make it look truly like a vector. This, I think, will look a little bit better if I can actually remove it. Come on. So we can just remove these pieces and parts, like so, and we can add in this extra piece, and this is all the screws and everything you would need, or extra screws you need, because the blaster comes with only like five or six screws in it, stock, and then you kind of just have to add in the extra ones. But we could just slide this piece in there, screw this back in, there we go, so now we have this piece on there, and now when we put it on this rail right here, like you would just with a normal strife. If I can figure out how that goes. There we go, like that. This will now clip in there. And maybe you like this setup a little bit better. Maybe you don't. That's kind of subjective, but that's a lot more room. It's a lot more comfortable, in my opinion. 
it doesn't really match up well with this big bulge right here to have a flat end right there, but that is at least closer to how the actual vector would work. It doesn't have this weird railing and decals. It's just a straight bar. That's kind of neato. And of course, now this is completely accessory. You know, I can use whatever accessory I want. So if I want to put this front muzzle piece, again, from the vector, goes on like that. If I want to add in this rail, well, really easy. We just add on the rail. This is really easy. It's going to work just like the other ones. You're just going to slide it on. I think I need to slide this on beforehand, if I remember correctly. Slide that on like that. Put that on. And voila, now we've got a vector pistol. A, well, a ra rather big one, but still. And then we can add a stock onto this thing. This is, of course, the folding stock, the collapsible one, which will lock into various places. But you can already see how building this thing up is extremely, extremely cool. And that's why I <laughs> got all these cool little pieces for it, because you can do a lot of nifty things with this kit. I'm gonna put this foregrip on as well because I can. And yeah, maybe you don't wanna use the whole vector like front grip or anything like that. You don't necessarily have to. In fact, we'll wait to put that on. If I don't want to use that piece right there, I can use, here's the honey badger piece right here. That will fit right on. Just like that. And you've got something a little bit different. It looks a little goofy, but it's still really cool looking in my opinion. Now it's more of a rifle configuration and you can put whatever you want in terms of muzzle at the very front of this or leave it bare, whatever you choose. I actually can put a whole new muzzle, muzzle thing on it. I can also extend this out ridiculously. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha! I've got the longest strife barrel ever. This thing would perform absolutely terribly. Let's uh not use that, but you get the idea here. There's a lot of cool nifty features that go into building up this blaster. And these are all existing parts that this stuff has existed for a while. And only now does it kind of make sense. Like, yeah, if you were doing a light up kind of strife thing before, you could have bought these pieces and used them, but they would always kind of look out of place a little bit, if you know what I mean. It's like, it's not like the strife was transparent because for some reason, they never made a transparent strife. But now, with how this is working, this is a little bit better, in my opinion, because it all matches together. And that makes a very cohesive ecosystem. And then you just shove LEDs all over in this thing, and you get one of the coolest looking blasters ever. And, of course, if you wanted to throw in something like, I don't know, a typhoon cage? Put that in there and you can see it without having to cut any kind of windows or anything in it. Which is awesome. And I'm not gonna show it off in this video, but let's say you wanted to paint it a different color and make it a transparent and yet, well, obviously a different color. Well, there's a way you can do that for relatively cheap. So I can kind of show that this is still transparent. And you can paint this any color you want, or it will tint it any color you want, and get a really, really cool looking setup out of this. So, yeah, it's safe to say I'm a huge fan of the swordfish, at least as a concept. Now, this is where we get into the kind of the ugly part. Not all your pieces are going to work with this. In fact, if I want to put in a select fire kit, well, I probably have to wait for worker to make their own, and that probably won't be sooner or later, but who knows if it's going to be better or worse than the select fire kits that are already available. And the fit and finish is not good. In fact, I had actually several issues getting this uh, magazine well off from the vector part from the original unboxing video. That was actually a nightmare that caused me to damage the piece quite extensively because it really just didn't want to come off the blaster. I can clip that in and unhook that, which is a nice little feature. It's still a little stiff, oh. but I had to shave down this rail quite a bit and I actually, you can see some stress marks in there where I damaged it a little bit. They're not super apparent because I was trying to be as, I was trying to be as gentle as possible, but they're still there. And I've also chewed up that rail a little bit. 
And this thing has got a lot of screw posts and everything already in it. That means if you want to do stuff, then you have to destroy things, which kind of sucks. Also, why is this battery chamber a thing? This is obviously some kind of hobby grade blaster. And they're really, I guess, trying to say that you should be using IMRs or something with it. Maybe that's really popular in other places in the world. And it's still really popular in the community. But the problem with using like aftermarket motors, like let's say I wanted to put these XP-180s in this Typhoon cage in this thing. That is a terrible idea because these require a lot more power than what those batteries can be putting out. And the biggest problem with doing stuff like that is that those batteries can vent and essentially just explode and melt your battery tray and your blaster. That is not even an uncommon occurrence. You should not use aftermarket motors with IMRs. They're just not meant for it. They can do it and they can do it pretty okay, but you're running some huge safety risks when doing that. Lower power motors, possibly okay, but again, you're still running that risk and it's just not worth it. And, being a modder, if I wanted to make this work with the LiPo, which you think it would be working for, in fact, they already sell an extended battery door for the thing, well, I would have to start cutting things out of it, which is not exactly something I want to do with my brand new expensive setup. And especially when I'm going to have to cut it really carefully because it's going to mess with all the transparencies. You can see all of the work I do, which means I need to work even harder with the thing which sucks. And also, why is this thing called the swordfish? There is a swordfish scaling on the grip. There's a swordfish on the side of this thing. I get that. But there was already a kit available, which I'm sure Worker was aware of when they built this, from Argus Modworks called the swordfish. And now it just makes things confusing. They could have called this whatever they want, and they really just doubled down on the swordfish thing. Like, oh, look, we're swordfish. We even have swordfish scales and a swordfish on the side of it, which not everybody's going to like. I happen to be okay with it, but that's kind of goofy. That's really, really goofy. I mean, the prophecy didn't have any of this weird, goofy stuff on it. It was just a slightly cooler retaliator that had a lot of compatibility with a lot of aftermarket parts and became its own ecosystem. This thing is just pure goof and i'm not sure why that was required i really don't <sighs> but even after all of that if you're looking for a blaster like this and you have the modding cap capability you can of course just transplant strife internals into this and that will work perfectly fine but this is really a blaster for modders and you're going to need to have some basic soldering expertise when you build this up anyway so i, I just don't understand why that had to be a thing Overall, if you're, you already have strifes and you don't have a use for a clear one and there really isn't a whole lot out there yet that makes me go, oh yeah, you should totally get this because they have this new thing that only works with this that'll make it amazing and you have to completely destroy your strife to do it, but this one works stock. I'm sure that's coming, but it doesn't exist right now. There is a full auto kit for this that has a three switch setup, which means it's going to be really easy to do single fire and then of course full auto because it has that kind of like the rapid strike stock thing where it has a switch that keeps power into the system until it resets. That's a good thing. Uh, this uh, does not uh, have that unless you buy that kit. And honestly, the kit didn't really look that good in my opinion. So I didn't get it. And uh, what I want to do with this is I'm almost positive I'm going to destroy this thing, but I'm going to give it a shot because I want to shove the V6 select fire kit in it. You can see I've already got this all out of the package. I've even taken like this piece off already to expose this board because I'm going to make this work. It's close enough to a strife that I feel comfortable trying to get this to work. At least that's what I hope. I really hope I can do that and that's why I'm kind of doing this without the internals in it because I still need to fish out a flywheel cage and everything like that and get this thing set up for doing that. And at the same time, I, d I just, I had to get this done before I break something and I can't do the review of it anyway. Again, it's a strife. There are no massive design changes. It's meant to be so close to a strife that and you can see this locking up a little bit. I probably have one of the screws down too far and there's no lubrication in the system whatsoever. So it is kind of sticky. But again, this is all modding stuff. This is not for the everyday person. This is a hobby level blaster. 
And honestly, I respect that, and I'm thankful for its existence, because this gives people who want to do crazy stuff a platform for doing crazy stuff. You have more room in this blaster than you would have with a standard strife, and honestly, with it being so squared off and everything like that, there's a lot of potential to build up from it. I mean, there is no pump action kits or anything that have the, like, the Yimax, whatever it's called. I don't know what the, the cool pump action kit for the Retaliator is. I'll put a picture of it on the screen, but there's nothing that bolts onto a strife to make it look kind of like that yet, but this might be something that ha that happens with. There might be some really cool complete body changes for this thing. I mean, this is a slightly easier platform to do that with, with the exception being the fish scales on the grip. And if you put something over this, then you're still going to have this kind of swordfish thing sitting through it. But, again, I am extremely happy with this blaster, and if you're a modder and you're looking for something like this, or you really just want to build the ultimate coolest looking strife that matches all of your accessories instead of having something that's obviously black and obviously a weapon and would probably get you shot by the police, at least here in the U.S., well, this is a nice alternative, because nobody's going to think this is a firearm. Even though it can obviously mimic it, nobody's going to think this is a firearm. And the last downside is, of course, when you have a magazine in here that's transparent, all this stuff, you can see, you personally can see every single dart that's in here, and then I can see every single dart that's in here. So I can tell how much ammo has somebody that somebody has left from a wide distance if they're building something up like this in full transparency. Which is a little bit of a, of a suck, in my opinion. Let me know down below. I know this was kind of a long-winded discussion on this thing, but let me know what you think. Obviously, this is not going to be for everyone, but I wanted to get some opinions if you thought that this kind of full transparent platform would be conducive to paying the extra money. I mean, even all these parts that I have on it right now, this is not a cheap setup, but is the looks and the potential worth it? Especially with all the things that you can do with the strife? I'm really curious. This has been Walcom's Hands. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. And when I say that, I mean you're probably going to see me completely work on this thing and possibly break it or make it better. Who knows? You gotta.